Hello, and welcome to Kettle and Bones, where we make really delicious, really healthy food. And you can too. Every once in a while, a dish comes along that challenges our perceptions of its ingredients. Such a dish, much, much greater than the sum of its parts, reminds us why we don the apron and pick up the kitchen tools in the first place. Because transforming the unimpressively ordinary into the unbelievably extraordinary is a very special type of culinary wizardry. And today we're weaving exactly that kind of magic. Today we're making a blue cheese wedge salad. Let's get cooking. Before we get going on anything at the kitchen counter, we first need to set this salad up for the ultimate levels of success, which, as you might imagine, means bacon. I'm oven roasting a pan of good quality uncured bacon at 375 degrees Fahrenheit, about 191 degrees Celsius, for about 20 minutes until it's nice and crispy. You can, of course, pan fry it if you prefer, but this way I'm freed up to prep the other elements of our salad while the bacon is cooking. We're going to make this salad extra special by making an extra special salad dressing. In a bowl, we're going to start with two egg yolks. I'm separating the yolks from the whites using the same method you've seen me use in several episodes at this point, gently lifting them and passing them back and forth until the non-yolk portion falls away. Save those egg whites in the fridge. We'll be using them later. Not today, but very soon. They call that foreshadowing. I'm going to break these up first with my whisk, and then, little by little, I'm streaming in avocado oil, just a tiny bit at a time. Why yes, this is similar to how we made our Caesar salad dressing in Kettle and Bones Series 1, Episode 14, and it's exactly how we started our deluxe avocado oil mayonnaise in Series 1, Episode 16. That's basically what this dressing will start with, mayonnaise. And sure, if you have a mayo that you like and trust, one that's made from good, quality, healthy oils, go ahead and use that. It will save you some time. But I will tell you, there's just nothing quite like making it from scratch pure and simple with no unnecessary additives or preservatives in it. Once a nice thick emulsion has formed, we're going to season this a bit, starting with a dollop of Dijon mustard, just a wee little splash of white wine vinegar, and the juice of half a lemon. As we mix those new ingredients in, you'll notice that it has thinned out the mayo base that we started quite a bit. To thicken this up again, I'm just going to slowly stream in some additional avocado oil while whisking until the consistency is right where I want it to be. This looks good for a dressing. I don't need this to be quite as thick as if I was just making mayonnaise. I just don't want it too runny. Let's add some salt, freshly ground black pepper, just a little splash of buttermilk. Okay, maybe two splashes some sour cream. I'm using a Central American crema. That's a sour cream that has just a little bit of lime flavor to it. It's what I prefer to use, but regular sour cream is great in this too, and it's probably more traditional anyway. Let's mix that once more. Not too, too much though, because whipping air into this will thicken it some, and I don't want to end up with whipped cream. All of the seasonings and flavorings we've added to this are to taste, by the way. We're looking for that right balance of flavor and texture. So as always, taste and adjust as you need to. Imagine you're pouring this out from a jar or a bottle, and imagine how fast or slowly a nice dressing should pour out. That's probably a good guide as to how thick you should make this. And as for the flavor, hmm, that's really good. Really bright and zippy, but also creamy and rich. You could darken this up if you feel you need to with Worcestershire sauce or fish sauce, but for me, this is good. Let's add some punch to this by grating some fresh garlic finely on a microplane. I'm using two cloves, but start with just one if you feel you might need it a little milder. Now we're bringing out the star of the show, the glittering funky diamond, the stinky crown jewel in our collection, the blue cheese. Do yourself a favor and invest in a good block of artisan blue cheese. Go to like a cheese shop if that's what you need to do to find good stuff. You're going through all this effort to make a really special blue cheese dressing. Don't skimp on the title ingredient. That pre-crumbled stuff you find vacuum sealed in the little plastic tubs, it's just... Uh, I mean, don't even waste your time. I know I probably sound a little snobby here, but 
You are absolutely going to notice the difference if you cheap out on the cheese. Splurge on some really good stuff. Next, go ahead and cut the cheese. And just crumble that in, large, medium, and small chunks. It's all good. I'm using a gorgonzola, by the way. That's an Italian blue cheese that's made from cow and sheep's milk. There are many other types that would work though. Uh, Roquefort is great in a dressing like this. Blue Stilton would also be delicious. I prefer a fairly hard, crumbly cheese in a dressing like this, but a semi-soft cheese like maybe a Danish blue could work, I suppose. For this, I don't think I'd go so soft as something like a blue brie cheese. I think we'd be missing the texture of the cheese crumbles with a very, very soft cheese, but that's a personal preference. When at last you feel you have enough wonderfully flavorful cheese crumbled in there, just give it a thorough mix. And now's the time to taste once more to see if it needs any additional salt, pepper, or lemon flavor. And then set this aside in the fridge while we prepare everything else. Everything else begins with a head of iceberg lettuce. Yes, I know. You may have heard me a couple weeks ago while we were making our cloud focaccia Italian sub. I was talking a little trash about iceberg lettuce, saying how it doesn't really contain much in the way of nutritional value. And that's true. Iceberg lettuce is pretty much just water but it does have a really light, delicate crunch, and it's probably one of the best lettuces to get a nice chunky wedge shape out of. So we're gonna use it, and we're going to sneak some additional nutrition onto our salad with some of our toppings. First though, we're gonna wedge this up. We're slicing it into equal quarters, exposing the interior layers of all those overlapping leaves. Hundreds of little nooks and crannies for our dressing to infiltrate and infuse with amazing blue cheese flavor. Now to the plating. I'm going with two wedges per serving since I'll be serving this as a full meal, but if this is meant to be just a salad course before a main entree, maybe just go with one. This is actually going to be more filling than you might think. We begin with a generous oozing of our spectacular homemade blue cheese dressing. Look at that. The consistency is just right. Too thick and it wouldn't really get down in between the lettuce leaves and we'd have all the flavor only on the outside. Too thin and it would be soupy. This is perfect. Next, I'm adding an optional ingredient that I like for additional flavor. Just a light sprinkle of dried dill. This brings in a bit more light herbiness that goes really well with the blue cheese. Now I'm going to sneak a little more nutrition onto this salad. I'm sprinkling on finely chopped leaves of spinach. Spinach is one of the most nutrient-packed bases for salad, and since iceberg lettuce is one of the least nutrient-packed lettuces, this is a great way to bring this in line nutritionally with other green salads. And the more finely chopped the spinach is, the less you will notice it's even there. Next, another personal preference of mine, a sprinkle of chopped scallions adds a bright, fresh onion flavor that contrasts really well with all this creaminess. Another nutritious addition to consider adding is chopped celery. Celery is rich in many of the vitamins, minerals, and fibers that iceberg lettuce is lacking. Next, some sliced grape tomatoes for a nice pop of fresh colors to contrast with the greens. Not gonna go too crazy with these. Tomatoes are not the lowest glycemic salad topping there is, but just a small portion will be really nice. Now, at long last, our rich, smoky, crispy, delicious bacon. I've coarsely chopped this, and I'm going to be generous with it. This, of course, adds protein, and it's going to up the fat macros for this meal and just make it more filling and satisfying and... I'm sorry, do I really need to justify sprinkling bacon on this? <laughs> no. On that note, this might not be considered an entirely traditional wedge salad topping, but I'm adding it anyway. Avocado slices. Avocados are nutrient-dense, rich, delicious, and their flavor and texture just go so well alongside both bacon and blue cheese. If you ask me, this is a no-brainer. I'm going to finish this with just a twist or two of additional freshly ground black pepper. And there we have it. With the smart application of just a few additional toppings, we've turned an unimpressive clump of leaves and dressing into a nutritional dynamo and a flavor powerhouse. Down on the farm, when a little head of iceberg lettuce is laying there in the fields at night, looking up at the stars and thinking about what it wants to be when it grows up, 
this is what it dreams of becoming. Some of its little brothers and sisters will grow up to find themselves on tacos, burgers, maybe even Thai lettuce wraps for some of the lucky ones. But you, you've become the best salad you can be. You made it, kiddo. Congratulations. Stay with Kettle and Bones for many, many more highly nutritious, highly delicious meals, sides, desserts, and more. Always low carb and always just the way you like it. But for now, just enjoy your blue cheese wedge salad.